Hey, Art Nerds, we are back on part two of our Creating a Graduation Cap series. In our last episode, we did a lot of different things. We cut down the Strathmore mixed media paper down to the size of a graduation mortar. We printed out our sketch and did graphite transfer on it. And then we penciled this again using a very light colored lead. I think it's like a yellow color Eno lead. So today we're gonna start working with Posca markers and I'm gonna work on this in stages. And my plan for this is to kind of work on it in time lapse and narrate over it for you guys. So I hope you guys enjoy and let me know down in the comments below if there's something I didn't cover that you'd like me to talk about more in depth. All right, guys, so we are starting with the sketch that we created in our last video. You guys will find a link to that in the description below. This video does not include a transcript. I do apologize for that. So the materials we're using today are Posca as well as some acrylic markers. So basically we're using tempera based markers and these are sold in, at an increasing number of art supply stores. You can also find them online and I'll have a link in the description. So what I'm doing with this piece is I'm starting with the background elements first, starting with the white of the clouds. Now, as I mentioned in my prior video, this is actually going to be on a graduation cap for my younger brother. So congrats, Devin Hilburn, on graduating college. It's a really, really big deal for my family, and we're super proud of you. And it was a pleasure to and an honor to be able to decorate his graduation cap for him. So I'm working on a piece of black Strathmore mixed media paper. You'll find a link to that in the description as well. And this is a fairly sturdy mixed media paper. I did try the Stonehenge Aqua black watercolor paper and I found that Posca's really chewed up that paper surface since it is a cold pressed watercolor paper. This has a smooth almost plate finish. I think it's got a vellum finish but it's a much smoother surface than the watercolor paper so it takes things like Posca a little bit better. Now one thing off the get-go speaking in post speaking from experience that I might do differently is I might go ahead and spray this down with a matte fixative first that's going to prime the surface and it's going to make it less prone to getting torn up. So I started with my white smoke clouds in the foreground just filling it in and I'm just kind of working with whatever Posca's I have. I have a few different sets, but um, I don't necessarily have like all the colors in one tip size or anything like that. I have kind of a mishmash because I purchased some off of Amazon and some were given to me as a gift and then some were purchased open stock at my local, local Jerry's Artorama because they have a Posca display. And I use Posca markers in several of my tutorials. You guys have seen them quite a number of times here on this channel and they're really cool because they will mark on plastic they'll mark on sealed wood they'll mark on pumpkins and if I just spray like a clear gloss coat over it I don't have to worry about it going anywhere it's pretty chip and scratch resistant so Posca markers are kind of like a tempera based marker I could never get Posca to tell me exactly what they are but they're kind of a matte color some people handle them like they would gouache um, or maybe even acrylic gouache. They're fairly permanent and they can mark on a wide variety of surfaces. They also play decently well with acrylic markers. So I often use them interchangeably. So I am going back over my white clouds in the foreground to give it another layer of depth. You guys can see some of the strokes on the area I haven't gotten to yet. I'm just trying to get it as filled in and as matte as possible. But because I didn't prime my surface first, I didn't realize that was something I should do. Um, I don't, it soaks in and it's still kind of streaky and I don't really get the kind of coverage that I'm looking for. I also want to point out that some of my Poscas are on the verge of death. I've had some of them for three or four years and they see a lot of use. Um, so some of them are starting to run out and when I pump them, instead of just pumping ink to the tip, they puddle and you guys will see that in a little bit. So now I'm working on filling in the another layer of gray on the mid-ground clouds. So my younger brother is a, he's graduating with a degree in petroleum engineering, but he is working on becoming a professional firefighter. And he is a huge fan of Gundam. I talk about this a lot in part one, but if you're new, I'll give you guys a brief recap. So we thought it would be really cool to do his grad cap with a Gundam firefighting 
on it. So I wanted to design a custom Gundam to kind of reflect my brother's interest. Now, there are actual Gundams, not, not in real life, real life, but like the Japanese fire department, one, one of their mascots is a Gundam putting out fires and I'll link to more information about that in the description below. And while that's super cool, I wanted to design something a little bit different and something that kind of reflected my brother's American experiences putting out fires. So um, I went with kind of what used to be apparently the popular design for firefighter helmets. I kind of modified that for his helmet it actually kind of makes him look more like a transformer though. So Pascas also dry really quickly, which can be a bad thing if you're looking to do color into color blends, but can be a really good thing if you're working on a time constraint. So um, once the first two layers had a chance to kind of dry, I'm now working on the flames in the background and I'm doing red flames in the background because I'm going to work um, kind of cool to bright. So we're gonna have red flames in the background, then orange and then yellow. And this is what I mean by my marker dying. My red marker died while I was working on the flames and I actually had to switch out to a Posca uh, brush marker because that's what I had and I don't like it as much. The coverage isn't as good for this kind of application. Now something I do like is I love how opaque and how brilliant the Posca markers are on this black mixed media paper. The colors really, really stand out. You could probably do this with chalk markers. You could probably do this with paint markers. You could definitely do this with like polychromos color pencils. Um, any kind of opaque media would stand out really, really nice on a graduation cap. If you're going to go with um, watercolor pencils or gouache, I would recommend you go with the Stonehenge Aqua Black watercolor paper. It's I have a full review of that. I did a kitchen sink review where I threw everything at it and reported back on it. And I think that would be a really good black paper for grad caps. So this isn't a particularly complicated process. It's a lot of just kind of filling things in, working from the background to the foreground, uh, and then to the main character, the Gundam itself. Um, I am outlining my forms first and then kind of coloring them in, but I'm not being particularly careful about my strokes or um, I'm not also not particularly concerned about uh, layering at this point in time because I'm going to go over and do another layer. Ideally, I would have worked with both smaller tip Poscas and larger tip Poscas. That would have saved me a lot of time. They do come in a variety of sizes, but like I mentioned earlier, I'm just kind of working with what I own. I didn't want to go out and buy something. I mean, no offense to my brother. I love him a lot and I definitely would buy it if I needed it. I bought the big pack of black uh, mixed media paper just for this project, but I already had a lot of Poscas, so I couldn't really justify like buying a bunch more Poscas. But if you are new to Poscas and you wanted to do a project like this, I would recommend getting both smaller ones and larger ones. It's going to make filling this in a lot easier. So now I'm working on the water coming out of his water gun and I wanted to use a white base and also kind of draw some of the spray so like it's hitting something and then I'm going to go over that once it's had a chance to dry and I've done another layer I'm going to go over that with blue. 
and the camera is making the colors look a lot more fluorescent than they are but this is like a soft banana yellow not a fluorescent yellow a fluorescent yellow wouldn't be a bad choice it's just not what I actually picked So something that kind of surprised me about this project is just kind of how easy it was. Once I did the graphite transfer, it's really very simple. Um, so if you want to decorate your own grad cap, don't let, don't be intimidated. It's actually a lot easier than you'd think it would be. You just need to go in with a game plan. And having done that sketch and then doing a graphite transfer really made me more confident in tackling this. And once I started working with the Poscas and I remembered how easy they are to use, it just kind of went from there. So I think this is a really accessible project. Maybe, maybe not a Gundam for you necessarily. Maybe something that you're more confident in drawing. Or maybe you can commission a favorite artist to do the sketch and then you could do the transfer. So it'd be like a collab. But I definitely think the actual art, the actual like uh, creating the painting part of the process is fairly easy and fairly accessible. And I think having custom grad caps is such a cool idea. I mentioned in the other video that none of the schools I graduated from allowed us to do that including SCAD which is an art college I don't even maybe they've changed their rules but at the time I graduated in 2012 they wouldn't let us do that um, so I think if your school allows it you should take advantage of it I think it's a cool memorable way to kind of put your mark on your graduation ceremony because so much of the graduation ceremony is depersonalized and homogenized, but you worked really hard for whatever your, whether it's high school, college, grad school, your PhD, whatever, your, your associate's degree, community college, whatever you're, gra you're graduating, your GED, anything. That's something you worked hard for and you should celebrate it. And having a little bit of personalization and customization is a wonderful way to do that and to kind of show who you are. So now I'm going over the white of the spray with a blue marker, just kind of doing some stroke motions. And I'm also kind of dotting in the spray um, and trying to overlap it on the flames as well. It's going to create a lot of visual contrast and interest. But already you guys can see how this is kind of coming together. Now initially I was just going to do the background today and walk away. But the background came together so quickly that I decided to just keep working until I got tired of working on it. So we're actually going to do the background in most of the Gundam today. Which is exciting. I am going to leave the text for the next video. So now I'm just kind of going in with a really dark gray and breaking up those smoke forms, those cloud forms, just to add some interest so that they're not so cut paper. And just kind of trying to show that the clouds themselves are billowing. And now I'm going to go into each set of flames and using, well for the red flames I'm going to use orange. For the centers and that's going to kind of help break up that that flame form and add some visual interest and add some contrast but for the foreground flames i'm going to use reds and oranges i'm going to use a color darker than the flames themselves it's a real shame that my red marker <laughs> died at this point and I did about two layers for everything just to kind of build up that saturation. Now, in terms of um, saturation, invisibility, and opacity, I probably could have done three. But the thing about Poscas is if you do too many layers, it'll start to crack and possibly flake off. So that's something you're going to want to keep in mind. Now, if I prime my paper by spraying a matte fixative or a matte finish on it, then I might not have had the opacity issues because some of that is caused by the Posca soaking into the paper. And if we'd sprayed a finish on it, it would all be sitting on top of it. So I'm just sharing this information in case you guys want to turn around and do something like this. I want you guys to have as much success as possible. You could even do chalks 
or pastels on your grad cap if you're working on like a paper that you're going to later attach to the cap itself and then seal it with a matte fixative or a matte spray. So once you have kind of your first few layers down, you don't really have to go over it again and again. It's basically just um, breaking up the black of the paper and building up those base tones. So for the centers of the flames, I don't necessarily do a lot of layers with those. So now it gets into kind of the fine detail work. You guys are going to see my head a lot in this. I apologize. I have bad eyesight. Y'all have heard this a million times. So I'm starting with a dark gray for the helmet. The helmet itself is supposed to be black, but I didn't want to go black on black paper. So I started with a dark gray and I'm going to layer an indigo on top of that, leaving some rim lighting of the darker gray so that you can see it a little bit better. And I think that left a really cool effect. And I decided to use that for any areas of the Gundam itself that are supposed to be black. So for the hands as well, I'm doing the same technique. And for its face guard, I initially fill it in with white. You guys will see in upcoming videos that I actually changed my mind about that a little bit. So don't be afraid to kind of tweak things and change things as, a go as you go along. You don't have to be married to any one particular thing. I also want to let you guys know that while I didn't copy any specific Gundam, I am working heavily from reference because I want it to actually look like a Gundam. Now, I will admit it does look a bit more like a retro transformer, but... The point remains, I worked, I used reference to get the look that I want. So for the main, um, like the arms and the legs, I'm going with white. And I, again, I was really referencing existing color schemes for Gundams. Now my brother's school colors are scarlet and gray. So I decided to use that as the main colors on this Gundam with a white accent and try to use silver where areas would be gray. And I have a trick for that and I'm going to show you guys when we get to it. But what I'm really doing right now is just kind of building up that base white, filling that in with the large white Posca marker.
And then for the shadows, to add some contrast and help delineate the forms, I'm using an eggshell white. So a creamier white, just to kind of have a little bit of difference. So it's not just a whole lot of white. I'm also filling in the areas of red. So his chest plate is red and his knee guards are red. And, uh, the, <laughs> I don't know what to call them on his little Gundam skirt, uh, are also red. I know they're kind of based off of like, uh, Spartan soldiers from ancient Greece, or I guess ancient Sparta. And I've already filled in the gray areas on, I guess, his uh, shoulder pads. Now I'm using a darker red on the, kind of the underside of his chest plate. And it's really useful to delineate forms like this. Now, something that I actually really like about Gundams and just kind of mechs in general, especially the more blocky, bulky ones like these, is you get really crisp definition of forms. So as long as you kind of remember that you're dealing with boxy square shapes and you just use a darker shade every time you kind of turn a corner or you ch change planes, you're going to get a really nice effect. And I talk about uh, developing form, developing contrast in a watercolor video, if you guys are interested in that. But basically, I'm kind of ignoring the light the flames would be catching at this point in time. And I'm really just focusing on delineating the areas. So the magenta that I used to add a darker red area, um, it kind of bled out on me as you guys saw. I used a paper towel to wick up the, mo the excess of that because it's going to dry quicker if I wick it up. And I'm just going to cover that with white later on. And I'm working on his water gun. And I, since it's a water gun, I decided to um, go with blues and whites for that. Now that makes it kind of look like a Nerf gun, but um, I think it does imply that is a water pistol and not like, I don't know, a laser beam, pew, 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 pew. I mean, for it could be shooting glass even, um, or dust, I guess, to like suffocate the fire, but it's water, it's water, y'all. So there's a lot of different ways to use Posca markers. The method I'm employing for this, really all you need is patience. Once, you're, once you've got a good sketch going, you just need patience. And Poscas will go over the, uh, the color Eno LEDs that I really like. So you can use that for your under sketch. And I'm kind of just working on filling in larger forms first and then working my way smaller. So at this point, I can start kind of fine tuning things and adding more details, which is kind of the fun part for me. Um, it's when things really start to kind of take on a life of their own and develop a personality. And this is an instance where the really fine point Poscas would be great. So for the silver areas, I am using a Molotov liquid chrome marker. So these things are super chromey on smooth surfaces, like some of my my wooden charms that have been sealed, I use the Molotov. But on paper like this, it's not going to be as chromey as like super reflective, but it's still really silvery and it still bounces the light back really well. So I kind of reserved it just as like the silver highlights rather than doing the whole thing with the chrome marker. I thought that might come across as a bit garish, especially in graduation photos. That's also the reason why in our upcoming video where I seal this, I actually use a matte fixative rather than a high gloss fixative. So we've got most of our major forms filled in. I'm just kind of tightening up the details, adding in um, lines and screws and like the 
the screw line on the screw that you put the screwdriver in. I don't know what that's called. I'm sure it has a specific name. Just things like that since we've got the major forms kind of filled in. And that is something I would recommend that you guys focus on filling in your major forms first and, and wait to add your details. And playing around with the silver pin is so much fun. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I hope um, it might inspire some of you guys to give Poscas a try. I know they're pretty popular here on YouTube and several other channels. Utilize them for their art. And there's so many different ways you can use them. This is just a very, very simple, accessible way. These markers are very different from a lot of other markers on the market. They are water-based. They can be blended out with water if you so wish. They are not really compatible with alcohol markers. If you wanted to use them with alcohol markers, I would use them on top of your alcohol markers. But I think this is a perfect use for them because it really gives me that opacity. And I don't really have the patience for gouache. So this is kind of like gouache in a really accessible format. So if you guys found this tutorial to be helpful, useful, and inspiring, please consider supporting the work that I do over on Patreon. You can join the Art Nerd community at patreon.com slash natosoup. This channel sees no outside support other than my wonderful art nerd. So if you want to help me continue to make it happen, joining me on Patreon is a great way to do it. If you made your own grad cap based on this tutorial, inspired by this tutorial, please link it in the description below. I would love to take a look at it. Just say something like, hey, Becca, I'd love it if you took a look at my grad cap and then included a link that lets me know that you're actually linking something relevant to the video and not something weird. So in our next video we are going to ink our Gundam and we're going to work on lettering this piece. I allowed this to dry overnight and resumed it the next morning. So thank you guys so much for watching. Bye guys! Alright guys so we have the majority of it finished. What I'm going to do in the next video is I'm going to work on lettering the lettering itself. So the Devin Hilburn class of 2019. And I'm going to use a black Posca pin to add some black details and black outlines to the Gundam to just kind of tighten them up. But so far I think he turned out really cool. And I really hope that the black outlines kind of help pop him from some of the white smoke in the background. If it doesn't, I may have to add more gray to that white smoke. But I'm pretty pleased with how it is coming along and I can't wait to see the finished cap. So make sure you tune in for our next installment to see how this comes together.